Hi guys, so this is the first plant I want you guys to be able to recognize because if you head out outside right now to the valley floor and you're looking up at the mountains, you can see this blooming just from down in town. So I think it's important that we learn, hey, what's that yellow sunflower looking plant up on the mountains? And we're gonna learn this true name of this plant now. And you will see throughout our video that a lot of the names come from the appearance of the plant. And that happens to be the case with this one. And you are correct when you say, hey, Stephanie, this is a sunflower. But I, like I said, we can see this one from the valley floor. It's a pretty cool plant. I want you to remember the name. So to solidify the name, we're going to first look at a leaf. So if you zoom in on here and look at the shape of the leaf, and I say to you guys, tell me what shape that is. I hope you're leaning towards triangle or minimally heart, okay? And then I would say, well, if I made you make a weapon out of that triangle, what would it be? Okay, it's an arrow. So we have an arrow leaf. Arrow leaf. And that is part of its name. The rest of it is, and it's kind of hard, balsam root. So this plant's name is arrow leaf balsam root. All right, we are going to look at something really awesome and I think a super cool native flower we have in Montana and it happens to be our state flower. So I hope you all are like, hey, it's a bitterroot, Stephanie. So then I look at my down at the ground, but do you see the flower? Not yet. Let's take a look what it looks like down here. And as we zoom into this bitterroot and we turn on our imaginations, what I see, and I am a strange individual, and that's okay, is a sea anemone. I think it looks similar to a sea anemone. So if you turn your mind on to, hey, I'm gonna look down for little land sea anemones up on the mountain, and they really like this dry, rocky soil. So this is a good habitat for the bitterroot. So this is what they look like right now. And then as it gets warmer and the days get longer, those little sea anemone succulent leaves suck back underground, and these buds come up, and then when it blooms, it's these big, pink, beautiful, almost tropical looking flowers. And that's our state flower, the bitterroot, and we're lucky to have it. So get out and see it. All right, here's another little native plant that really loves our rocky, dry soils, and it is called cutleaf daisy. And I'm gonna show you how it gets that name here in a second, but first I do want you to know that uh, are the only native daisies that we have are gonna be this size. So when we see out in the range a big white daisy like this, that's a good indicator to you that that's a noxious weed because our native daisies, again, are gonna be little dime-sized flowers. So zoom in with me, and I'm gonna show you how it actually gets its name, cut leaf daisy. So if you look at this leaf, it isn't one solid leaf. It looks like somebody came in and cut the leaf up with scissors, hence the name cut leaf daisy. And of course, our flower is very um, iconic as a little daisy. Okay guys, so for our next flower is this one called Shooting Star, which is in full bloom right now. We can see all these nice colors and it gets its name from the yellow here, which you can remember as the star, and the purple petals, which are kind of that star trail, so it's shooting over and it bends over like this, which is really, really neat. There's also a really fun, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a red ring around the yellow star here. And that maybe acts as an attractant for pollinators um, because those colors really catch the eye of different pollinators to make sure they're spreading pollen and creating new flowers. 